5.3 is optimization problems using exponential functions. So some of this should be familiar to you from back in the days of exponential work. But in this case, we're bringing in E. So you haven't done work with E yet. So it says the population of a bacterial culture is given by this equation here. So this is population at time t equals 200 times e to the 0 0.094t, where pt is population time t, t is in number of days. What is the initial population? So that's the population at time zero, right? So we're going to just put in p at zero, and that's going to give us 200e to the 0 0.094 times zero. So anything to the power of zero is one, and that's going to give us 200, Didn't leave enough room. So there's 200 bacteria at time zero. What is the population after five days? Well, that's another simple calculation. You should, you don't have to even know any calculus to do this, right? So you do P at five, 200 E to the 0 0.094 times five. And if you do that, you get about 320. How long will it take for the population to double? So remember, anytime you're doing something that's doubling, this is your initial number is 200. So if I double it, it's going to be 400. So I put 400 on this side. 400 equals 200 times e to the 0.094t. So dividing both sides by two or by two hundred, I would get two is equal to e to the zero point zero nine four t. And now what I need to do is take the ln of each side. So ln is something; um, it's the natural logarithm, right? So the the ln of e is one because that's really the log base e of e equals one, right? So what do I raise e to to get e? And I would say one. And then the ln, for instance, the ln of e to the five, that would be like me saying, what is the log base e of e to the fifth power? And you would say five. I have to apologize for my yellow fingernails. I was working with some turmeric and um, it stains, it just doesn't come out. So I apologize. Okay, so rewrite this equation now. So, oh, how long will it take for the population to double? I haven't finished that. So now I'm going to take the ln of both sides. And so the ln of ln of 2 equals the ln, ln, I'm having trouble writing ln, of e to the 0.094t. So that means this is ln of 2 is equal to the exponent here. So ln 2 is equal to 0.094t. And then all you have to do is use your calculator, divide the ln of 2 by 0 0.094, and you should get time is approximately 7.37. So the time was in days, so that would be 7.37 days. And finally, if you were asked to rewrite this equation with a base of 2, then you could say, well, the doubling time is 7.37, so the population at time t is going to be the initial amount doubling every t divided by 7.37. So remember when you did doubling equations, you had t divided by the doubling period, or if it was half-life, t divided by the half-life. So for instance, if the doubling period is 7.37 hours, and 14.74 hours go by, then it will have doubled twice. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's try a second one here. It says a biologist studies an insect whose population triples every week. They start with 100 insects, write an equation, sorry about that, write an equation for this population at time t. So the population at time t is going to be the initial amount, which is 100, and they said it triples, so I'm multiplying by 3, it triples every week. So if t is in weeks, then I just have to put this to the power of t, right? 
So for instance, if I said, what is the population after four weeks? You'd say population at four weeks equals 100 times 3 to the power of 4. And 3 to the power of 4 is 81 times 100 would be 8100. Okay, how fast is a population increasing at any time t? So anytime you see anything that says how fast is something happening or what is the rate of change or this means derivative, right? At any time t. So I need to take the derivative of p at t here. So this is where you get to um, show your skills of b to the x. So what's the derivative of b to the x? And remember that's b to the x ln b. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I have 100 times b to the x ln b, where b is 3. So that's any time t. What is the original rate of change? So I want to know what is p0 or p prime, sorry, at 0. So that's going to be 100 times 3 to the 0 ln 3. So 3 to the 0 is 1. So I have 100 times the ln of 3. And that comes out to about 110. So that would be 110 insects. Remember, you have to have units for word problems. Insects per week. What is the rate of change at the end of four weeks? Well, we found out what the population was after four weeks, but I want to know the rate of change. So I want to know what is P prime at four. P prime at four is going to be 100 times three to the power of four ln three. And I think that is 88.99. I didn't double check that, so you can do this math here. Well, I could do it for you. Let's take a look. 3 to the power of 4, that's 81 times 100. So it's going to be 8100 times the ln of 3. Yeah, it gets 88.99 approximately. Okay, so these should be kind of familiar to you, I think, from, from grade, grade uh, 11 and grade 12, where you did some exponential work. Okay, another example. Radioactive gold, AU-198, is used in the diagnosis of liver disease. Suppose a 6 milligram sample is injected into a liver and it decays to 4.6 milligrams in one day. Determine the disintegration constant K. So this is a very familiar and um, it's a, an equation that's used a lot. The number of time t is the initial amount times e to the negative kt. So k is your disintegration constant, and that's what we want to solve for. So our initial amount is 6 milligrams, so that's our n0. Sometimes good idea to write these things out, and the number at time t is 4.6. So I'm just going to plug those numbers in here. 6 times e to the minus kt. So I'm going to divide 4.6 divided by 6. I'm going to take the ln of both sides. So the ln of 4.6 divided by 6, put that in brackets, is equal to, and the ln of e to the minus kt is minus kt, right? So if you... Um, if you solve for this now, so let's uh, let's get the calculator out again because I didn't um, I didn't take the I didn't take the lawn. Um, so we have six e to the minus k, and we forgot to put in our time here. The time was one day went by, right? So you need one day. So when I take the lawn of that side and the lawn. Let me make some more space in here for the lawn. The lawn. And it said, it's like lawn, like grass, right? We all love our lawns. The lawn of e to the negative k times 1. So this answer here is just going to be negative k. Except I already divide by 6. Make some room here. 
Okay, so what happens when you have a cold? Your brain doesn't work very well. Okay, so now we're in better shape here. So we've taken, we divided by six, we took the ln of each side, and the ln of e to the minus k is just going to be minus k. And if you do the ln of 4.6 divided by six, you get approximately negative 0 0.266. And so that means that k is approximately equal to 2.2. Six. Maybe put 2.66, right? Why should we scrimp on our decimals? Okay, so now it says determine the half-life of this special gold and find the rate of decay after five days. Okay, so half-life, if we started with six, I want to get to three, right? That's half of six. So we should probably have our initial equation here. So let's write this out. The number at time t is going to be, so we started with six, so it's six e to the k, the negative k, negative 2.66 t. So there's our, there's our very nice equation. So if I want to know the half-life, I'm going to use this equation. We found the k value, that's this here, that's all and I put it as 2.6, it should be 0.266. Oh my goodness, I need to go to bed, but someone was asking me for this, so I'm trying to get this done for you before I, before I go to bed. Okay, there we go. Determine the half-life. Okay, so if I have six here, I want this side to be three. So let's say three is equal to six e to the negative 0.266t. So three divided by six is a half. That's exactly what we wanted as e to the negative 0.266t. Now let's take the ln of both sides. So the ln of 0.5 is going to be, the ln of e to this is this, right? Minus 0.266. And at this point, we should have also, um, well, let's just do the, the half-life here. So we've got 0.266t. And the lawn of this, let's do the lawn of 0.5. So lawn, 0.5, turn it on, 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 clear, lawn, 0.5, bracket, divided by minus 0.266, and we get 2.6. So time is 2.6 approximately. So that's the half-life of gold 198. So now that we have the half-life, we could also write a half-life equation as well. So our half-life equation, this is, I think someone was asking me, how do you switch around between them? So this is an example of having it with a base E and now having it with a base of 0.5. Right, so the number at time t is going to be 6 times. So we still have, instead of e now, we have a half. So you can write as 0.5 or 1 half. And t divided by the half-life time, which is 2.6. Now note, these are kind of almost the same, right? This was, That's why I was getting the 2.6 and the 0.266. But they're very different numbers for half-life and for the constant. And I wrote it with a point two here, a two point. It's point two six six. Okay, now we've got all that straightened out. Okay, so now if I decided to take the derivative, so they want the rate of decay after five days, I can use this equation or I can use this one to find n prime. If I use this one, this is the easier one because n prime of t equals, we know how to take the derivative of e to a power. So I do 6e to the negative 0.266t times minus 0.266, right? So that's a very easy derivative. It's very easy to take the derivative of an exponential uh, a function with a base of e, 
because we know that derivative of e to the x, e to the x, derivative of e to this is e to this times the derivative of the exponent. So I'm going to do 6 times, and then on your calculator over ln, you have e to the x. So I'm going to do ln, sorry, e to the power of negative 0.266, and we want it after 5 days, so times 5. And then the whole thing times negative 0.266. And I get minus n prime at 5. That's a 5. Equals approximately negative 0.422. Okay, so now let's try the other derivative here, which is like b to the x. I want b to the x ln b derivative of the exponent which is a little bit longer, so n prime at t equals 6 times 0.5. So the derivative of b to the x is b to the x, so we'll put, this is like our b to the x, ln b, so ln of 0.5 times the derivative of 1 over 2.6 times t, so oh, times 1 over 2.6. So n prime at 5 now, so after 5 days, so we're going to do 6 times 0.5 to the power of 5 over 2.6 times the ln of 0.5 times 1 over 2.6. So these calculations, you have to be very careful on your calculator, right? Because all these exponents, so watch, we're going to do 6 times bracket 0.5 we're going to raise it to the power of and another bracket because I've got to divide 5 divided by 2.6 close the bracket and then times the ln of 5 oh, not 5 ln of 0.5 close the bracket times bracket 1 divided by 2.6 bracket enter and look what I got the very same answer as the one above okay so 0.422 negative so it's off a little tiny bit because remember we did round um, the time here so the time got rounded a bit and this was rounded as well okay so that shows how you could use the derivative using the base of e so the derivative of e to the x, or you can use b to the x if you have the half-life. Yeah, it's pretty tricky, isn't it? But you'll get used to it. You can do it. You've done it before. Okay, so the last question is a graphing question. And I don't know how many of you have gone this far with your um, derivatives, because some, some teachers are kind of jumping around the book a bit. But I'm going to do a complete analysis here because... Um, those who come after you will probably already have done chapter four. So the question asks you to graph, and you should be able to, even at this point, find critical values. Right. So <coughs> we're going to graph, we're going to do find the x-intercept. So for x-intercept, set y equal to zero. And if y equals zero here, um, e to the power of 2x is never zero, so that means it will happen when x is 0. So x-intercept is 0. And for y-intercept, set x equal to 0. And when x is 0, I again get the y-intercept is also 0. So if x-intercept is 0, y-intercept is 0. Now let's take a look at the horizontal asymptote. So I want to know what happens as x approaches infinity, <clears throat> what happens to the graph here? So I'm multiplying 2 times infinity and e time to the power of 2 infinities. So as x approaches infinity, y is going to approach infinity. So the other well we have to check as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, I would get y being so let's just plug in infinity here, although you never, you never go there. 
2 times negative infinity times e to the 2 times negative infinity is going to be over e to the 2 times infinity, right? So because this is going to be a negative exponent, it comes to the denominator. So this, because it's e raised to this power, this denominator is going to be much larger than this, and this is going to be approaching zero. So here's an example where you've got, you know, something going up on one side and approaching zero on the other, and we'll see that as we do more of the analysis. <coughs> okay, so let's take the first derivative of this, y prime. So I'm going to do the first, that's 2x, times the derivative of e to the 2x. So that's going to be 2e to the 2x, right? So e to the 2x times 2, or 2e to the 2x. That's the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second e to the 2x times the derivative of 2x is going to be 2e to the 2x. Okay, so this is all really pretty. It looks like we have something nice to factor out here, like a 2e to the 2x, right? So I take out 2e to the 2x, and I'm left with 2x plus 1. Okay, so um, for critical values, let's do that right now. So for critical values, set y prime equal to 0. This is never 0. Remember, e to, to the 2x is never 0. It's an exponential function. It doesn't even cross the x-axis. So that doesn't count. Only have to look here. So if 2x plus 1 equals 0, x is equal to negative 1 over 2. So that could be a critical point. So now you could either... Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the second derivative because normally by this point you would have done that as well. So the second derivative of e to the 2x, I'm going to go back to this function here, I think. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. So now I'm going to do... Um, or maybe I'll use this one. This looks a little easier to me. The first times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. So I'm going to do the first times the derivative of the second. So derivative of second is 2x plus 1. So that's going to be 2 plus the second times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 2e to the 2x is going to be 2 e to the 2x times 2. So I'm going to make that just 4e to the 2x right now. 4e to the 2x. Okay, so what have we got now to straighten up here? So we have 2e2. This is going to be 4e to the 2x. And this is going to be um, 8x plus 4e to the 2x. See here now. So we've got plus 8x e to the 2x plus 4e to the 2x. Okay. So I have 4e to the 2x plus 4e to the 2x. That's going to be 8e to the 2x. So let's write this, simplify it a little bit more. So I have 4x e to the 2x, it's this one. I add these two together and I get 8e's to the 2x. And that's the second derivative. So now what I can do um, is I'm going to, let's see, I had 4e to the 2x, 2, 4e to the 2x. I'm going to take out a common factor. Um, What did I do here? I did the first times derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So that would have been 2e to the 2x times 2 is 4e to the 2x. So that was 4e to the 2x plus 4x. That's 8xe to the 2x 
plus 4e to the 2x. This is when you need your students in the background saying, Ms. Havrat, you made a mistake there. So I have 8xe to the 2x. This makes more sense now. Okay, are you still with me? I think I would have hung up by now. <laughs> so I have 8e to the 2x. And in the brackets, what am I left with? x plus 1. Okay, so some of these are a little tricky. you got to take your time, right? Just take your time to do them. Okay, so now I have this critical value of minus a half. And you can either use a first derivative test. Let's do both of them. So I'm going to do y prime, a derivative test on minus 1 half. So I use the first derivative and I plug in a number to the left and to the right to see if there is a change in slope. So remember, if it's a minimum, it's going to go down and then up. If it's a maximum, it's going to go up and then down. So if I put a negative 1 here, so if I had 2 times e to the negative 2, that's still positive. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative, so that means this has to be negative. If I go to the other side, even to 0 here, so e to the 0, that would be 2 times 1 is 2. That's positive. So that means there will be a minimum, minimum at, I have minus a half, and I need the y coordinate for this function. So if I put in negative a half here, I would have negative 1 plus e to the power of 1 and that's going to give me let's let's write it out because it's getting too con too confusing so if i do 2 times minus a half times e 2 minus 1 half so that's going to give me negative 1 times e to the this is going to be to e to the negative 1 so it's going to be 1 over e. So that's going to give me negative 1 over e. And that's my other coordinate here for the minimum. The other way you could check would be a second derivative test by plugging in minus a half here and see if your answer is positive or negative. If I put in negative a half here, this would be positive. This is always positive. So I would have positive and that would mean a minimum value as well. If you don't understand these happy faces you'll have to go back to chapter four. Okay so um, now that I have my minimum value minus a half and one over e and you probably want to have an idea of where this where this is right minus one over e. So on your calculator again you have um, e to the x, so I have e to the um, 1 over 1 over e, so I just want to do minus 1 divided by e to the power of 1, and that gives me about minus 3, 0.37, so just for when you're graphing, minus 0.37, so it's approximately that. Okay, so now I have a minimum value and I need to find if there are any um, changes or points of inflection. So for points of inflection, we're going to set y double prime equal to zero. And that means this. This is never zero. Just remember all of them, they're always the same. If it's e to some power, that's never zero. But this can be. So. I'm going to say x is equal to negative 1. That's a possible point of inflection. And again, you have to do a second derivative test to see what's happening. We need to show a change in concavity on both sides of this negative 1. So if I go to negative 2, for instance, obviously this is still positive. This is always positive. e to the negative 4 is just 1 over e to the 4th, positive. If I put a negative 2 here, I'm going to get a negative number. So it's going to be a positive times a negative is a negative. That means concave down. If I go to the other side, if I put in 0, I would get 8 times 1 is positive. So it's going to be concave up. 
So therefore, there's a point of inflection at, and I use negative one, and I go back to the original function. So y at x equals negative one is two times negative one times e to the two times negative one is negative two. So that's going to give me, I'm running out of space here, minus two over e squared. Okay, so that's my, that's my y coordinate minus two over e squared. It's my y coordinate for the point of inflection. So now I'm going to make a sketch of this function very quickly for you here. And that's going to be the end of 5.3 for you. Okay, so I have, um, as x approaches negative infinity, this is going to approach, remember we had a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Now this is one of those instances where a function can cross for finite values because we have x and y intercepts here and we said as x approaches infinity, this was going to approach infinity. We had a minimum value at minus one half. So let's say this is minus a half here and minus 0.3. So that's 0.5, 1, 2, 0.3. So let's say it's about here and it was point minus 0.37. So maybe just a little bit lower. I don't have a very large scale here. So let's say it's about here just for an argument's sake. So this is coming down like this. We have a minimum value and then we have a point of inflection at, where was our point of inflection here? At minus one and minus two over e squared. And if you do that calculation, this is approximately a minus 0 0.27. So that means it's coming back up like this. And here we have a change of inflection, a point of inflection. So we have kind of like this is concave up from here and then it becomes concave down and that's going to approach infinity or zero as X approaches negative infinity. So this is a graph of y equals 2x e to the 2x. I hope that was helpful for you. This is also 12c from the textbook and um, I hope uh, you stuck with me through this. I know I sounded a little a little bad with the calculation here for a bit, but it's late. I'm tired and you want it, so I'm bringing it to you as soon as possible. All the best. Subscribe and good luck on this unit.